Hi, it's Luke Smith, Application Specialist here at Avid, and in this video we're going to put our new Yukon application set to the test in a music session. The music session we have open is from a song by Arcade Fire called Rococo. I'm starting with just the drum tracks, and if I press play, well I notice right away that the kick drum is soloed. I can obviously see that it is soloed in the Pro Tools mixer, but if the track was not visible, I now have a solo indicator on the control surface as well. I'm very pleased to announce that we now have both clear solo and clear mute functions available in Pro Tools 10. You can now clear any solos or mutes in the transport counter with your mouse or directly from the control surface. So if I hit clear solo and press play, you will notice I can now hear all the drums. I also noticed this room hallway drum track is not actually part of my drum group. This must have been my mistake to not include this track when I originally created the group, but it doesn't matter because I can hit the group edit button and quickly add it. So if I hit the modify group button now, it will start blinking, and then I can select whichever group I would like to modify. Notice my modify groups dialog is up, and I can select the room hallway track, add it to the drums group, click OK, and now I can see the track is added to the group I want. Going back to the home page, let's take another look at the Pro Tools mixer. I want to mention that we have this fader assigned in U control to attention selected track, which means as soon as I select any track in Pro Tools, this fader will start controlling it. We have the kick selected now, but if I select the drum crush track instead, I automatically have a fader. I'm going to pull up and adjust the third party plugins on this track by selecting inserts on the surface and then clicking on the first plugin. This is the MIC DSP 6030 compressor, and you see that I can easily control it right here from the surface. The main point is I have two third-party plugins on this track, which means it is no longer phase aligned with the rest of my drums. If I played it back, we would definitely hear some phasey weirdness because I noticed delay compensation is off. To access delay comp, let's use the pull-down menu pages programmed into our new application set. If I hit menu, I can see all the different Pro Tools pull-downs. I know that delay compensation is in the options menu, but I also know there is no key command for it. This is no longer an issue because now I have it right here on my soft keys. Let's turn delay compensation on. I noticed in the Pro Tools mixer that there was indeed a 96 sample delay on that track, and Pro Tools is now compensated for it. So I'm going to press play, and let me solo out the drums. Now I will start blending that drum crush track to the rest of the drums to create more punch. Well, that might be a bit too much. Let's bring it back down. Great, that's exactly what I wanted. Now, let's take a look at all the tracks and move on to the main vocals. First, I'll put my cursor on the main vocal track, and then I want to select this wheel button. The wheel button takes me to a new page of functions specific to the jog wheel. If you notice here, the jog wheel is now capable of performing many different types of functions. First I'm going to zoom in horizontally, then I can zoom in vertically as well. I will go ahead and use a couple of new functions to scroll horizontally and vertically. Perfect, now I can clearly see my main vocal track and I notice right away that this clip is at a significantly lower volume than the rest of the main vocal clips. In this case I can use another great new Pro Tools 10 feature called Clip Gain. This feature is incredibly convenient when needing to quickly adjust the volume of a clip. If I highlight this clip, I can then use the jog wheel to adjust the gain. If I go too far, I have a clear clip gain button to get me back to the original volume. There we go. Now it's much similar to the rest of the vocal track. Well, at this point, I'm ready to write some automation. So I want to select this track, switch it to volume view, and then I'm going to use my auto basic button on the home page of the touchscreen. The Auto Basic button allows me to quickly get any track into any automation mode, including trim. Previously, the only way to change the automation mode of a track was to cycle through all of the modes using this button next to each fader. However, there are many instances where users would like to go directly from touch to off, or from read to latch, for example. Now this new application set makes that possible and gives me full access to the Pro Tools automation system. I have a Do to Selected button here, and when I hit the button, it becomes highlighted, and I can select any mode. In this case, I want latch. 
I can see this track is in latch mode now, so let's start writing automation. I'm going to recall the memory marker to verse 1. Let's rewind a bit. And now I'll press play to start writing automation. Let's go downtown and watch the modern kids. Let's go downtown and talk to the modern kids. Great. Nice and easy. If I zoom in on the volume automation that was written, we can see how accurate it is. This is a direct result of the increased fader resolution that Yukon offers with any DAW. If I wanted to bounce this track, I would go to the home page, select the menu button, and then file. Next I would hit the bounce to button and hit bounce to disk. So as you can see from the start of a session to the end of a session, this control surface definitely has the potential to greatly enhance your workflow.